Ten years ago, the world was struck by a zombie apocalypse and today, the situation remains dire. The zombies have evolved into distinct types. The homers, slow and clumsy, who do ridiculous things like getting their tongues stuck on ice. The hawkings, intelligent zombies capable of strategizing, like using the eye of a deceased scientist to bypass a security door. And the ninja zombies, who are stealthy and ambush their victims unexpectedly. In Washington, D.C., four survivors form a tight-knit group. Tallahassee, his girlfriend Columbus, and her sister Little Rock. After a decade of surviving together, they have become experts in zombie combat, working as a flawless team. They cut through hordes of zombies effortlessly, taking them down before they can even retaliate. After a long and successful battle, the group clears the area and heads to the White House, which they claim is their new home. For the first few days, life is good. They fix up the place to make it feel like home, celebrate Little Rock's 18th birthday, and enjoy their time together. Tallahassee has grown protective of Little Rock, acting as a father figure. But she starts to feel stifled by the constant attention. She yearns to be around people her own age and no longer wants to be treated like a child. Tallahassee doesn't quite understand this, which causes tension between them. Weeks later, Tallahassee decides to celebrate Christmas early and gives Little Rock a gun that once belonged to Elvis Presley. She is frustrated by his constant gifting of weapons and storms off to blow off steam by killing zombies. Meanwhile, Columbus surprises Wichita by proposing to her, but she grows anxious, fearing that all marriages end in divorce. Columbus gives her time to consider his proposal. The next morning, the guys discover that the sisters have left, leaving only a vague note behind. As the sisters travel in Tallahassee's modified car, they discuss how they shouldn't have grown attached. They encounter Berkeley, a pacifist and musician, and Little Rock decides not to shoot him. A month later, Tallahassee and Columbus are at the mall, trying to pass the time, but Columbus keeps obsessing over Wichita. Tallahassee mocks him, suggesting they hit the road again, but their plans are interrupted when a zombie appears. Tallahassee quickly handles the situation with an impressive shot, though Columbus is unconvinced it was Zombie Kill of the Year, a title he believes belongs to a farmer who ran over a zombie with a tractor. Later, Columbus encounters Madison in a candle store, who is thrilled to meet another survivor. Despite Tallahassee's objections, Columbus invites her to join them. Back at the White House, they quickly realize Madison isn't the sharpest, but Columbus, desperate for companionship, ends up pursuing a relationship with her. That night, Tallahassee hears a noise and shoots at the first sign of movement, only to realize it's Columbus. They investigate together and find Wichita in the garage. She reveals that she came back to get more weapons, and that Little Rock is gone. She had fallen for Berkeley who had led them to believe they could find safety without violence. Tallahassee, worried for Little Rock, is disturbed by the idea that she has lost her way. Wichita is deeply concerned for her sister, especially after hearing about a new, more dangerous breed of zombie. Despite Wichita's wishes to search alone, Tallahassee and Columbus insist on helping her find Little Rock. Wichita apologizes to Columbus for leaving without explanation, but before she can continue, Madison interrupts, causing Wichita to grow jealous and distant. As the group prepares to set out, Tallahassee is shocked to learn that Wichita has acquired a minivan, something he deems unmanly. However, with working vehicles in short supply, they have little choice but to use it. Madison insists on joining the group, which only heightens Wichita's jealousy. The guys decide to leave her belongings behind because they stick to the rule of traveling light. Meanwhile, Little Rock and Berkeley continue their journey together. Little Rock shoots random objects for fun, including a money truck, and admits she's never tried Mary Jane. Berkeley, ever the relaxed pacifist, pulls out a bag and shares it with her, filling the car with smoke as he serenades her with love songs. Back with Columbus's group, Madison reveals that she took the engagement ring from the bedside drawer, which annoys Wichita, leading to a passive-aggressive exchange between them. Suddenly, Tallahassee stops the car, causing Madison to hit her head. Nearby, they spot a fancy bus and decide to switch vehicles. On their way to the bus, Columbus and Wichita's bickering continues. Once they reach the bus, Madison accidentally sets off the alarm, drawing a horde of zombies toward them. They quickly fall into their practice routine. Columbus jumps on the bus's roof and starts firing while Tallahassee and Wichita give directions. The zombies fall one by one, but Wichita's weapon jams. Just as a zombie is about to attack her, Madison uses pepper spray to give Wichita the chance to fix her weapon and kill the creature. They ignore a homer running away, but when another zombie attacks the roof, Columbus dodges it, sending it crashing to the ground, where the others finish it off. Only one zombie remains, but despite Tallahassee's relentless gunfire, it doesn't fall. It turns out to be an evolved zombie, which Columbus dubs the T-100, after the Terminator. Tallahassee ultimately has to crush its head to stop it. After the battle, Tallahassee marks the bus with a three, as per their tradition, and the group prepares to leave. 
However, the bus runs over spikes, ruining the tires so they're forced to continue on in the minivan. Later, while snacking on nuts, the group discusses Madison's foolishness when she suddenly becomes very sick. Tallahassee stops the car and Madison runs out to throw up. The trio talks about what to do. Columbus doesn't want her to die, but Tallahassee and Wichita remind him that being turned into a zombie is much worse. Reluctantly, Columbus goes into the forest and finds Madison in a terrible state. He makes a difficult decision and back at the car, Wichita and Tallahassee hear gunshot. The ride becomes tense and awkward. That night, they arrive at Graceland only to find it destroyed and abandoned. Disappointed, they continue on their journey until they stumble upon the Hound Dog Hotel, where Tallahassee spots his old car. The group rushes inside with Wichita searching for Little Rock. Tallahassee nerds out over the Elvis memorabilia, even putting on his shoes and playing the piano. Suddenly, he's knocked out by a woman named Nevada, who holds him at gunpoint. Wichita and Columbus rush to the rescue, and after a tense moment, they learn that Nevada and Berkeley left to find Babylon, a supposed zombie-free sanctuary. However, it turns out Babylon has no guns, which may pose a problem since zombies are following Berkeley's car. Tallahassee and Nevada share drinks and flirt with Tallahassee doing his best Elvis impression. They end up spending the night together. The next morning, Berkeley and Lil Rock finally arrive at Babylon, where Lil Rock is forced to hand over her weapons to a man who plans to melt them down into a pendant. The place is secure, surrounded by strong walls and a towering central structure, where everyone lives in peace without a worry. Back at the hotel, Tallahassee wakes up in Nevada to show off how cool he looks in Elvis' clothes. Suddenly, they hear a strange horn and rush outside to find a monster truck parked on top of Tallahassee's car. Furious, he confronts the driver, Albuquerque, who turns out to be a friend of Nevada's. As the two argue, the others realize how similar they are, almost like a parody of each other. Ben Flagstaff, another man traveling with Albuquerque, emerges from the truck to support his friend. Flagstaff resembles Columbus and has his own set of survival rules, which he calls commandments. A childish argument breaks out between the four men, trying to outdo each other in front of the women. Eventually, Nevada intervenes, calming them down. Albuquerque and Flagstaff explain that they return because the T-800s have overrun the area. The group heads inside for drinks, but another argument is interrupted when they hear noise outside. The T-800s are there. Albuquerque and Flagstaff rush out and quickly take down the zombies. When they return to show off their victory, Nevada notices that Albuquerque has been bitten. He tries to pass it off as a tattoo, but soon he pukes, revealing that both he and Flagstaff were bitten. As the two begin to transform, the group is forced into a fight. Nevada opens fire, but the T-800s are unaffected by bullets. The group fights them through the hotel corridors using Elvis memorabilia as weapons. They corner the duo on top of a pool table, using the balls and cues to defend themselves. The fight becomes chaotic as they try to avoid hurting the men while fighting off the zombies. Eventually, Tallahassee takes down Albuquerque with an Elvis statue and crushes his head with a guitar. Flagstaff tackles Columbus, giving Nevada the chance to shoot him in the head. Tallahassee wonders if this could be his zombie kill of the year, but Columbus suggests a better kill in Italy, where a man used mannequins to attract zombies and drop a tower on them. Tallahassee bids Nevada goodbye with a kiss, and she gives him an Elvis ring as a memento. He tries dragging the monster truck but struggles to control it, so the group is forced to return to the minivan. A few hours later, Wichita attempts to mend her relationship with Columbus when they spot an ice cream truck passing by, driven by Madison, who turns out to be alive. It's revealed that Columbus only pretended to shoot her, allowing her to escape. Her sickness had actually been a nut allergy. She joins the group again, and for the rest of the night, they endure her endless babbling. The next morning, the group arrives at Babylon, thinking it might be their forever home. As a final farewell, Tallahassee blows up the minivan. Despite not wanting to leave his guns behind, he's determined to reunite with Little Rock. Once the weapons are melted down, the group is allowed inside, and they rush to embrace Little Rock. She apologizes for leaving but explains that they won't fit in as the place is too peaceful for them. Seeing Little Rock as an adult, Tallahassee decides to leave and start over elsewhere. Later that night, Tallahassee is driving away when he suddenly hits a zombie. To his shock, it stands up, revealing that it's a T-800. The area is soon overrun with a large horde of T-800s running toward Babylon. Tallahassee quickly drives back, warning everyone about the zombies and making them cut the music and fireworks. Berkeley doesn't take him seriously and Little Rock breaks up with him. With no weapons at their disposal, Tallahassee devises a new plan using the tower's biodiesel. The group works together to build a massive bomb, and the hippies are quickly taught how to use shields. They break down a wall and set up a contraption with fireworks to lure the zombies in. As the creatures approach, they ignite a fire on the ground and retreat to safety. 
The fire quickly escalates into a huge explosion that wipes out the zombies in one powerful blast. However, another horde is fast approaching, and the team is forced to fight with nothing but shovels. Though they manage to take out a few zombies, there are two main to fend off. Realizing they can't hold on much longer, Tallahassee declares that it's the end, and the group shares a heartfelt moment before saying goodbye. Suddenly, the sound of a horn echoes, and Nevada arrives in the monster truck. She rescues the group, driving recklessly to crush the zombies under the truck's massive wheels. The truck spins out, creating a zombie tornado, and then flips over a wall, landing on more zombies. After one last rampage, the truck crashes, and the group has to flee on foot to reach a tower. They find their path blocked by zombies, but Madison and Berkeley help by tossing objects to take out the horde. As they fight their way to the tower, they use Nevada's gun and anything else they can find. Once on the roof, the hippies hold up makeshift shields to funnel the zombies toward the edge. Most of the group retreats, but Tallahassee stays behind, acting as bait. He leaps at the last second to grab onto a crane while the zombies plunge to their deaths, trying to reach him but failing. Columbus declares this to be the zombie kill of the century. Two final zombies manage to grab Tallahassee's leg, and the group is unsure how to help until Little Rock suddenly appears and shoots them. It turns out she had been carrying Tallahassee's Christmas gift all along. With all the zombies finally dead, the group pulls Tallahassee to safety. He and Little Rock have an emotional reconciliation, and Wichita says yes to Columbus' proposal, accepting the ring. The couple shares a kiss, and Nevada and Tallahassee follow their example. Meanwhile, Madison and Berkeley kiss too, as a homer zombie appears but quickly falls to its death. After a night of celebrating with fireworks, the original four, along with Nevada, drive off in a fancy car to find a new home with the zombie chasing after them. The scene cuts to a flashback showing Bill Murray on the day of the outbreak. He was promoting his third asterisk, Garfield asterisk film when a reporter asked him to demonstrate gagging on a hairball. Suddenly, a reporter vomits and transforms into a zombie. An assistant runs away in fear, but Bill remains calm, killing the zombie with a chair. On his way out, he encounters more zombies but stays composed, fighting his way outside with the chair and anything else he can grab. As he leaves, he mutters that he hates Mondays. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.